Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech early production radio control German Tiger 1. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the model's tracks as well as the electronics and the model has actually just come back from taking a test drive. We'll be going over all this information as well as the test drive in this video. And here's the tank now sitting on its tracks. The tracks that you see installed on the tank are the kit original Tiger 1 tracks that were found on the early batch of Tiger 1s from ArmorTech. They are all made out of cast white metal alloy and are similar in specs as the tracks that they make today, however are a lot more primitive compared to the current offerings. Getting a close up of the track link, I have here one of the extra links that were used on this tank. This track link here is an original pattern Armatech track link for the first batch Armatech Tigers. As you can see, the track link itself is all casted out of one piece metal. It's a metallic alloy. The track guide horns are integrally molded in as with the current generation and just like with the current generation are absent their mud slits for the same reason that I mentioned in the other video. The track does have the integral molded in sprocket tooth protector as well as decent thread patterning on the overall track itself. In comparison I have here a spare track link of the current Armatech generation. As you can see the current version is a lot more evolved from their original offering with the track pattern itself. It's a little bit more in depth compared to the original and the current pattern has this nice black oxide finish to it which is different from the bare steel silver color found on their first pattern track. The tracks are in spec with each other. They utilize the same sprocket which was again mentioned in an earlier video and also hinged together. However it's not a good idea to mix a different style of track on your tank as you want one whole pattern of track to, links to be used when assembling. As for connecting the links together, this is done via a steel pin. Now the steel pin that you see here is an original early pattern Armored Tech Tiger 1 steel pin and is from my spare maintenance bin for my own Armored Tech early pattern Tiger 1. These pins here are all made out of mild steel and there's no type of corrosive res resistant coating on them. If we can compare this to the current generation of ArmorTech pins, you'll see that since the release of this kit, ArmorTech has upgraded their pin setup and now feature a chrome plated pin which holds up much better to corrosion compared to their mild steel counterpart. Also, the way the pins lock onto the track is a lot more primitive compared to their current offering. On the original Armatech Tiger 1 setup, as you can see there's a small little machined recess in the top portion of the pin. In order to lock the pieces in place, this was facilitated with little spring washers. The spring washer would crimp onto the little recess here and once installed the piece would be held firmly in place and prevent any type of backing out of the pin. The setup works very very well however if you need to get access to the track and need to pop a pin the washer gets destroyed in the procedure so which is why it's a good idea if you have one of these old armor tech tanks to have a large supply of these washers on hand. In addition to the washer being destroyed another downside of this setup is that visually it is not as accurate as the cotter pin setup which is found on the modern ArmorTech releases as cotter pins are what's used on the actual Tiger 1 which is what we have here on the current generation version as you see is a small little recess again but the pieces come pre-drilled in which you would put a washer and a small miniature cotter pin and that would facilitate in keeping the track in place. Now the unit that you see on this tank here are actually not held on with the spring washer. Instead what the customer went ahead and did is he had his track pins upgraded via an aftermarket supplier. Back when these kits were first released 
there was a fellow on the Armor Tech community forum who would perform a procedure in which you would mail him your mild steel track pins, and he would go ahead and refinish them with a corrosive proof finish, which I want to say was maybe nitrocarburization. However, this here is what the pin looked like when you got it back. Both of these pins would have started off the same way. You would mail him your bag of pins. He would perform the procedure and send them back to you. In addition to adding the corrosion resistance finish on it, he would also pre-drill out each of the pins and give you the little washers and cotter pins in order to install the track the more accurate way. What's interesting is that ArmorTech saw this setup and did the exact same design cue on their releases that followed this early production version here. And as for recognition, this here is my early first pattern, Armor Tech Tiger 1, in which it has the stock track with the stock mild steel pins and spring clips. As you can see, this is what the spring clips look like once installed to the model. This is good to know in case anyone is acquiring a Armor Tech kit on the secondhand market. You get to know, you can, just by looking at the track, you get to tell which generation of track, as well as if it's stock or has been added with the aftermarket pins. And here goes the track with the aftermarket pins, with cotter pins added. In addition to the, not the coating being added to the track pin, the little supply washers also feature the exact same corrosion resistant surface as the pins themselves. Now this aftermarket supplier no longer offers this surface, so if anyone does have these components on hand, they are quite rare today. With the tracks out of the way, it is now time to get the tank up and rolling. And to do that, we must work on the model's electronics. The electronics that you see laid out here are the original electronics that were supplied with the Armor Tech kit. And the all the components that you see here are what's utilized for not only the main power, but also for the main drive. These electronics here are the first generation Armor Tech electronics and what have been supplied with the Armor Tech kits from 2003 to approximately 2005. Since that time period, ArmorTech has continually improved and upgraded their electronic packages, making them smaller and a lot more lighter compared to this first gen offering. However, there are some, you can still see some evolutionary traits on their newer components, which link back to this first gen incarnation, which is an interesting footnote. Starting with this large box here. This large box here is actually your main power box. It is a large plastic enclosure that is your on and off switch. These early Armor Tech kits had a very nice audible toggle switch them, which definitely lets you know when the tank was on or off and had a nice tactile feel to it. As you can see, there's a main power indicator light, which would turn on when the model was on. And over here we have your fuse box. The fuses have a corresponding LED, which indicates if the fuses are good, which would be a green light, or if they need to be replaced. What's nice about the fuses is that they are in a nice, easy, accessible location, and if the, if the need be arises, can easily be replaced if one happens to burn out. Here we can see the connections. As you can see, it's all pre-wired. So it looks a bit ungainly, but they pretty much followed the same format up until very recently. This main plug here is that of your turret subloom. This is for the turret rotation motor. These two here would be for each of the main drive motors. This is your battery lead. And these wires here would be for the receiver. For the main drive, this is utilized by this system here. 
all three of these boxes are what's needed to have the model boat tracks drive. The original kits utilize a 4QD speed controller. Armatech used 4QD for a period of time and I believe might still be used today, however I'm uncertain of that. The system here, again, looks a bit ungainly, however all the connections are mostly plug and play. All of the connections are already done for you and everything all plugs together fairly easy and fairly quickly. I have built several models in the past with this system and they do work very well. The Where these systems get complicated is when it comes time to hooking up this, the sound system. First, in order to get the tank running, these two boxes here each hook up to the motor and to the power box. Both of these boxes also connect to this small little relay box and this relay box here connects your receiver via these two channels over here. In order to get the sound system to function, that what's not seen in this layout here is another box. This other box, which is also of notice substantial size, connects to the main power box and also splices into the speed controllers. If we notice, the main power box is not only a power box, but has a speaker built in. This speaker here is actually what's used for your sound system. In order to connect the sound system, you need to actually cut and patch into the wires that connect into this relay box here. This system here is a little bit complicated and does require a lot of experience with working with these type of electronics. It's a lot more archaic and a lot more complicated compared to the Benedetti sound system which ArmorTech moved on to, which in my opinion is far superior than this old system. Also, what's currently not shown is that for both the gun elevation as well as the tarp rotation, there are two smaller electronicized speed controllers which would also patch into the system here, of which I'll be going over in an upcoming video. Like I said before, this system here does work and does work pretty well. The one downside of this system, however, is as you can see, the size of the components are very, very large. And with this, they really eat up internal space very quickly. It's funny, a lot of people think that with a 1-6 scale tank, the hull size is sufficient enough to really cram in a lot of components. And as you can see, that's not necessarily the case. With the size of these electronics here, free space gets gobbled up very quickly, and free space becomes much more of a luxury, specifically when it, in terms of getting to access, namely for switches, battery charging, and so forth. Because of the extra functions that are going to be going into this model here, this system here will not be utilized on this build. In its place, I went ahead and opted for the current ArmorTech electronic system, along with the Benedetti sound system, of which we'll be going over right now. And here's the model, all jury-rigged, and is actually functional. Like I said before, I went ahead and opted out of using the stock original supplier electronics for this kit and use the ArmorTech current incarnation of the option pack. As you can see, compared to all of those boxes with all those wires, the current ArmorTech system is all facilitated with one box that is very low profile and is very recommended for specifically if you're going to have a lot of equipment and functions in the model like this one we'll have here. Also, one nice feature of the current set that I really like is the fact that their switch is now external, is not part of the main power box, and is on a long extension cord. This switch here can be positioned just, just about anywhere underneath any of the hatches, and as you can see, does not take up a whole lot of space. As for patching the new system with the old motors, this was not hard to do at all, as the original motors were 24 volt powered and all armor tag kits are 24 volt. With this system here being 24 volt, there was no voltage issue to worry about in patching the new with the old. Now this is something that is commonly seen on a lot of secondhand hand Armortech tigers that are and models that are floating around. A lot of people, they, when they purchase the kit, they purchase the kit without the option pack supplied. By the time they get to starting the model, 
the original option pack that the model would have originally been offered with may not be around anymore. So when they purchase the electronics, they get a more modern version. Or in many cases, a lot of builders like to retrofit and modify their builds with more current electronics when they become available. So it's not uncommon to find a, on the second hand market, a first generation Tiger One with a second or third generation electronic package in it. As for hooking up the motors, the only modification I needed to be made to the motors was that of one of the connections. As we recall from the previous video, the, the motors come pre-wired with connectors already fastened and connected to the supplied wires. This set here, since it's designed for the first generation package, is not compatible with the current system with that of one of the connectors. Both of the connectors need to be a male plug while there is a male and female on the original Armortech motors. It's just a simple switch. You clip off the one connector and solder on a male connector in place of the female. This is done to both motors. It's a very simple procedure. Once done, your motors will now be compatible with the current Armortech electronics. As you can see, moving to the batteries, the Armortech kit, like I mentioned before, is 24 volt powered. As for the batteries I'll be using, I will be using the lithium ion batteries from smartbattery.com. I've mentioned this in several videos as these batteries here are far superior to any of the lead acid batteries that I've used in the past or continue to see on the market. They are being lithium ion a quarter of the weight and both these batteries here weigh less than one whole lead acid battery and on top of that they are much more reliable and last a lot 10 times longer than their lead acid counterparts so highly recommended and again you're probably going to be seeing me utilize these batteries for all 1.6 scale armor tech builds in the future the batteries are hooked up in series circuit and everything was hooked up as per the armor tech specs the model in this condition here like i said is fully radio control and it's fully operational i have here a futaba radio this here again is just a test radio and as the build progresses a more finalized radio will be utilized. However, for the purposes of this video here, I could take the tank for a test drive. Okay, well that was the tank, literally the first time this model has been driven since it was built. And as you can see, there are a few too many links on both sides. I will go ahead now and remove a link or two from each side and then see how well the tank performs then. And here's the model, now with one link removed on each side, as well as the rear idler tension slightly adjusted. As you can see, there's no longer a huge amount of slop located in the front of the sprocket as well as in the rear of the idler. We'll go ahead and continue with the test drive to see how the model performs.
Well, as you can see, for the first time in 10 years for running, the tank performed quite well. With the track adjusted, the tank did not have any slop on the track as it navigated both on and off-road, in both straightaways as well as in turns. Just like with all RC Armortech builds, once the equipment as well as the top deck and turret begin to be mounted and added, the track tension is going to need to be adjusted slightly from the way you see it here. However, this here gives us a great start from in order to add on the other components that I just mentioned. From this point here, the tank will be driven back up onto the lift and the next amount of work that will be made to the model is that of fabrication of all the floorboards as well as the equipment harnesses and mounts which are required past the condition that you see it here. More information on that is to come in a future upcoming video. And with that, that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale early production Armortech German Tiger 1. If you liked this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 116 and 16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.